Jack, can you discuss the password used on Iwo Jima? What? The password used on Iwo Jima. Oh, yes, every night we had a, a password. Of course, we had to leave uh, our fire, we had to leave our foxhole for any reason at all. You get shot. So if, for any reason, you had to leave, as this fellow did, it was in front of us, uh, being a machine gun, we gave over a head fire. So this fellow had to leave the voxel. And with all these serious stories, it, some of the things get kind of funny. And uh, he had to leave and get out of the foxhole. So he came towards us and uh, right towards the gun. And he was afraid of being shot. And so he thought of the password. And he's a heavy set foe. And he earned himself a name that we, he lived with for a long time afterward. With every step he took, we, the password was any uh, president of the United States you could think of. So that you could think of anything you wanted, just use that word. And he came towards us. And with every step he took, a heavy set fellow looking right at us, he said, Hoover, Hoover, Hoover. Hoover, Hoover, and his body was shaking. And uh, we looked at him and smiled and waved, and he kept right on saying Hoover. And he was Hoover from then on, whenever we saw the guy. <laughs> funny, funny, funny. But it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Even then, when when you were told to get a live Japanese prisoner for interrogation. Oh yes, we had one. Uh, uh, some fellow came from the back where he came from, but he it came up to us and he said, they are looking for a prisoner. We've got to get a couple of prisoners. Uh, we had a, a rather bad day, a rather bad week. In fact, a whole damn month was pretty bad. And uh, we looked at each other, and it was the first time I really felt close to everybody. We are all our, uh, working, and uh, we smiled at each other and looked at the guy and he was real serious real serious and we told the guy and I see that everybody's adult here <laughs> we just told the guy as we pointed from where he came from screw you <laughs> and, and he left and that was the end of the, the story of getting another prisoner. We weren't about to take any prisoners. We never had. And we weren't about to then. And so we, we uh, left it at that. I see one man here who uh, was a BAR man. Now, BAR man is a pretty good guy. Where is he? Who is it? Who am I thinking of? James. James, where are you? He's got to be there someplace with a white, oh yeah, with a white hair. Ha uh ha. -huh. So he, he was never a machine gunner. And it was always a question of how come, how did they pick the machine gunners from the other people? And we, we told him some time ago, I don't know if he believed it or not, I certainly think he and his wife did. We said, everybody that was kind of ugly would never make the machine gun squad. If you're ugly, you just didn't make it. And uh, so Jim felt kind of bad about that. You know, he was short and he was ugly. <laughs> That's a hard thing to say with a man who possibly brought one of the BARs home with him. But, eh, and I'm sure his wife is going to give me hell for talking like this. <laughs> but he felt so bad, they even gave him to take home with him a silver star. Yeah. That's a little insight. Tell us about when you were wounded. Yeah. Well, that's a tragic thing, really. I, I got wounded. Not very much, really. I came out of it very well. Very good. But then again, it would always come up. You're on evil. Just get hit. Now there's a big pregnant pause. How am I going to say anything like that? Because when I was digging a hole, a uh, mortar shell went off someplace, not too close, kind of close. 
and hit me in the rear end. <laughs> now you're going to a party, and you know you want to be a big guy. Yeah, to tell you, will you? Yeah. And then you had to say it out loud, which you hated to do. Where did you get hit, Jack? And you had to say, I got hit in the ass. <laughs> not very, not very good. <laughs> Those things happen. Since the miniseries kind of had John Bass Lone there, Clarence had the fortune of, of knowing John Bass Lone. And can you tell us about some of the leave and liberty that you took with John Bass Lone and, the, and your family's farm in Bakersfield, California? When I first met John in uh, 1944, the beginning of 1944, John came back from the war bond tours. I came out of the paramarines. They came out to Camp Panel to form the uh, 5th Marine Division. Uh, we became, I had a platoon, rifle platoon. John had a machine gun platoon. We bunked together in the barracks when we were in the barracks before we moved out to the tents, and uh, we became very close friends. He, we'd go to spend a lot of time in Los Angeles in the old Biltmore Hotel on weekends, but very often I lived about 100 miles north of there, and he loved to go home and get out of Los Angeles because people drove him crazy after the war bond tour. He couldn't go into a bar, a restaurant, or any place without people just driving him nuts. And uh, so he loved to get out of town, and so we'd go up to our place uh, in Bakersfield, California, which was a couple hundred miles north of Camp Pendleton. Uh, my sister had a ranch. He loved to go there and spend time up there. Uh, in fact, today I've got a nephew who showed up today from Texas, and I didn't know it was coming. And he was, his mother was my sister, and uh, she had the ranch. And this is, I've got pictures of us out at the barbecues there that uh, he used to love to go to, and uh, we, we spent a lot of time there. We spent a lot of time in Los Angeles. Uh, one, there was one example of how people treated him. Every place he went, he didn't wear, he wore the ribbon, and of course everybody recognized it, but they recognized him from the pictures they'd seen in the paper but from the war bond tours. They, uh, they, they, there was an attorney in Los Angeles that gave John uh, his car. Chrysler sedan. Every weekend when we go to Los Angeles, we pick up this sedan and we had the whole weekend with a beautiful big limousine actually. So we had a lot of good times. He enjoyed getting away from it, and getting up out of the city. And uh, my nieces, uh, one of my sisters, my whole family loved him. He was a great guy. One more thing about John. John was a very loose guy, a nice guy, but he really didn't care the fact that he, he was a Medal of Honor winner. And, uh, but he liked to kid around with it. So we'd have a roll call every morning, and uh, the platoon leader would be there, that was a lieutenant, and our sergeant was there, and we'd take a roll call. And John would always be late coming out to the roll call. He'd have his helmet on backwards, he'd walk down, he'd wave at us, we nodded or something like that. And he pretended as if he hadn't seen the platoon leader who was standing there at attention with a salute. And he had to keep it there until John returned the salute. As you know, when, you, when somebody salutes you, you return the salute. And it's just the opposite with the Medal of Honor winner. He is saluted. And so he uh, would look at, back at, it, look at us and then he'd oh, pretend like he hadn't seen the leader, the lieutenant, waiting as he, he was standing there to salute. And he'd, wait, he'd look back and, and apologize and he'd salute slowly, put his head down. We, it was a nice way to start the day. That was John Barcelona. A nice guy. <laughs> nice guy he was. I've, I've heard that from.